Welcome to the Dark Tower Month 4 Comic A Day. Doing things a little differently this month, but we are like four episodes away from being totally done. So if you don't know what that new change is, go back and watch the other... Actually, I think 25 at this point. I don't know. Either way, this month I'm featuring my partner in crime, Chris. Uh, that's a me. <laughs> from Bard and Chris Vlog. Check out the channel. We've got some good vids up right now. More to come. Format is just a little looser with analysis throughout the recap bits. So massive spoilers are massive for everything Dark Towers related. You've been warned. <laughs> so a couple more fluff pages of characterization for Roland later. We get him all on board about saving Midworld by taking the fight directly to Farson. Complete with holding the downed flag of Gilead. Because, you know, <laughs> it's a great image, but why? <laughs> Because this that's his home. He takes his home with him wherever he goes on his back. Which would work. He is Marturin. <laughs> Elsewhere, General Grissom, the guy on the cover of this <laughs> issue, and one of the, like, super heads of Farson's army, has found and put a freaking laser <laughs> cannon online. And he tests it out on an unnamed man who doesn't want to live in this world, but vows that the gunslinger shall come for Farson's head. I mean, he, he has to be someone from Gilead, right? I would assume. <laughs> we literally know nothing about this man. Literally, He's this there is just... for four or five panels at most. Well, he wants to die, but he really doesn't like us. <laughs> Now, the entire time, I think it was Elaine who was watching through the uh, spyglass. It might have been Elaine, yeah. One of them is watching through the spyglass. It could be Randall, for all we know. But someone is watching through a spyglass, and literally they just comment on how Grissom just literally murdered this man with condensed light. So this is where our heroes decide that they need to strike first. Roland tells Randolph that his information was correct. What? Who even is Randolph? Randolph is Roland's best spy. Did Jamie call in <laughs> sick on set this day so they're like, crap, grab a jobber. No, it's Randolph. Apparently he's just the best scout in the world that he hasn't been mentioned or seen in the past 20-something issues. Right, he's good at stealth. <laughs> is this like that Ant-Man <laughs> thing? Oh, Ant-Man was in every Avengers <laughs> film? Good for him. <laughs> so over Which then later it gets overwritten by what they say in issue four. Yeah. <laughs> Randolph, what is you? <laughs> so over with Grissom and his engineers, one of them is talking about how an M16 is totally better than this laser cannon. I mean, it has the same firepower, it's transportable, the enemy will never, and then he gets sniped in the head. Although I do like the fact that that M16 had the grenade launcher <laughs> attachment under it. So Grissom then starts firing up his laser, but he mainly only kills his own men. And by mainly, I mean he only kills his own men. Yeah. There's there's like eight people now. But of course, Roland does want some of their enemies to survive to spread the fear of their forces, you know, as you do. But eventually the heroes win. Although, I don't like that literally it cuts from, and so he tried blowing up the laser. And Grissom's in there, so he's pretty sturdy now too. He's like a lobster. <laughs> Then it cuts to, like, three weeks later. Man, wasn't destroying that encampment awesome? I'm like, oh, hold on. You can't go, man, how do we defeat that? And then just go, hey, remember when we defeated that? <laughs> so anyways, three weeks later, Randolph has apparently not stopped his vigilance to the annoyance of his wife. However, he tells them that, you know, I'll go berry picking with you guys sooner or later. And they go off. The thing of it is, they don't leave the safety of the Alliance's borders. They, they just... stay where they know it's safe because they figure the Alliance knows this part of this this area is safe. We have patrols. They can keep and... us close. They were close enough where someone can come get us in case something bad does happen. That being said, the irony of a mother being smacked over the face with her son. Horribly, horribly, horrible. Oh, yeah. But hilarious. But the artwork is funny. <laughs> yeah, it's... <laughs> it's the artwork that really does it. That's literally how this ends, with, well, a mom be <laughs> being cracked like she's a baseball with her son as the baseball bat. By a slow mutant. A very big slow mutant. And honestly, I liked this issue for what it was. Like, not a lot really does happen. But the only problem I had is, poof, Randolph. So I'm fairly certain that was the plot to season five of Buffy the Vampire Slayer. You know, when Dawn appeared. You know, I've always been here. No, you haven't. But he's not a bad character, but bad things will happen very shortly. <laughs> he's not a bad man, but he's forced to do bad things. Later on in life. What? <laughs> the, I, the, I don't the, know what this sentence means. The exact sentence that I just wrote for the script was, though I did like trying to humanize a slow mutant, beats his wife with his son. 
<laughs> I think I did like them trying to humanize him by showing a slow mutant, you know. That doesn't humanize him. That shows the mortality of his wife and son. But they're both living at that point. <laughs> But no, I think I realized what my big issue this series is with what my problem with Battle of Jericho Hill. What's that? It's very big on the tell, don't show front. That's actually very, very true. They've cut out so much stuff. There's just so many time jumps about things they could have shown us had they made it a longer series. This is one of the shortest. So, I mean, they could have, you know what, very well they could have padded it out and made it longer. They have longer series. But they decided to keep this one short and they had to cut so much, but they tell you all about what they cut. Yeah, it's like, this is definitely more illustrated prose. It's a lot like when we watched the Percy Jackson movies. When they were talking about it in the second one, how he went and, you know, he found the Golden Fleece and he fought a Gorgon and this and that. And we're like, where's that movie? I want to see that movie. Or the Artemis Fowl movie. Where, oh, right. I will end your life. <laughs> he really likes Artemis Fowl. Anyways, come back tomorrow where Randolph, we find out, is a dick. Well, not so much, but we'll talk about that later. Deuces.